Hello, my name is Julian Baker and I'm the Principal Instructor of the College of Bowen Studies, teaching the Bowen Technique. Uh, we used to be called ECBS, European College of Bowen Studies. We've been around for quite some time and uh, College of Bowen Studies reflects our uh, non-limitation, if you like, to being uh, European. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, Bowen, about the background of it, about uh, what it is, where it comes from, and how it might benefit you as a practitioner um, if you came along and learned with us. So very briefly, a little bit about, about me. Um, I've been uh, practicing Bowen since 1988. I started uh, when I was living in Australia. I had a, um, a quite a bad neck condition and um, I found this person who sort of offered me this thing called Bowen. I had no idea what it was about. It was a complete mystery to me. I'd done some massage and some reflexology, so I was interested in the in complementary therapies, um, but nothing had really worked for me as far as my neck was concerned. And she gave me this treatment. I was very skeptical about it and left um, not exactly impressed with what I'd uh, received. But it was just incredible. And I mean, literally from that day, and that was many, many years ago, as I said, um, I haven't had the same level of, of neck pain and, and that I used to have on a regular basis. So I um, I suppose now, since then, it's, it's, it's been an endless source of fascination for me that my whole adult life has been spent trying to um, understand Bowen, teach it and um, get to grips with it. So it's, it, it, and it hasn't stopped yet. So I'm still as, uh, as, as incredibly fascinated as ever I was. So I suppose I could be uh, classed as one of the world leading experts by the default of the fact that I've been around long enough. So, um, But I have been uh, teaching full time since 1994 when I came back from Australia. Um, it was just there was nobody in the UK and it was something that I felt drawn to do and um, introduced it. We had an article in the Daily Mail that was just that, that just took everything off and um, so I've been teaching full time since then and with various um, teachers that we have on board and we've got an incredible team with us now. I'm, I, I can honestly say hand on heart that the, the, the level that we've brought these guys to has just been absolutely astounding. In 2007, I started to run um, human dissection classes, having studied with Gil Headley in the States. Um, and, and the reason for that is, is, again, the explanations that we originally had as far as Bowen was concerned. For me, it just didn't really cut it. You know, we get told, you know, it, it, it was just what it was and there wasn't enough of a theory behind it for, to satisfy me. And so I was always sort of digging deeper and asking the questions and it never really, uh, it never really sort of satisfied me. So the dissection um, and the study of fascia started to really help me to explain and, and give um, Bowen the sort of the theory and the, uh, the background that I felt it needed. Um, the result is that I've written a couple of books. Well, one of the books was before the dissection classes, but one, one has been since then. And uh, trying to explain Bowen and trying to understand it, they are both, I think they're both out of print now. So it's probably about time to write another one. So, so watch this space. And um, I, I've been around the world. I've been really fortunate enough to, to be asked to go and teach in lots of different places. I've been to the States and uh, Scandinavia, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, um, a lot of cold countries, obviously, but all over the place as, as far as teaching is concerned. And it's just been, uh, you know, my, my journey. It's been my, I suppose, if, if there's such a thing as a calling, then um, it would be this. So um, what about ECBS? Who is the college? Who is ECBS? And um, what do we, you know, what do we stand for? Well, we started in 1994. As I said to you, um, we originally set Bowen up and we called it the, the European College of Bowen Studies. Uh, we were teaching with um, some Australians in that, those days as well. And um, so we, we sort of formed fully the European College of Bowen Studies in, in 2000. And um, this was something that um, we sort of felt that the College of Bowen Studies, that we could study Bowen, we could understand what it was and, and, and try and develop it. Um, we have taught, I'm going to say, over 5,000 practitioners in the UK alone. And um, it just captures the imagination. Anytime we have uh, press articles or we have uh, the radio on the Jameson Show and the BBC a couple of times, the, the, the fascination of, of people for Bowen, uh, simply because of what it is, and we'll cover that in a minute, um, is, is quite phenomenal. Uh, about, I um, can't remember, about four years ago, three or four years ago, uh, we got Federation of Holistic Therapist uh, accredited training. Now, it's not just uh, the accredited training that we've got, it's, um, um, it, it's, it's a full accreditation, which is the only Bowen, Bowen College in the UK that has got that. That's, that's quite remarkable. And um, they, were very, they were very kind and very um, complimentary about our quality and our standards. So that was a, a really nice thing to have. 
Um, the main thing for us is we want to understand it. We want to um, see Bowen as a, as a therapeutic tool, not just as a complementary alternative, but as a, as a standalone that it can uh, work alongside um, conventional thinking. It's not outside. We don't really understand what's going on with a lot of these things, but something's happening. And I really want to get to grips with the science and the physiology um, and really um, I'm pushing for research and, and, and good language in the way that we communicate and we talk. We don't know a lot of what, why it works the way that it works. We've got our theories um, and they need to be tested. So, you know, the future is, is really testing both the efficacy and, and, the, and the theory behind it. Um, we consider ourselves to be leaders in the field. You know, I've designed the modular systems. Um, I've designed the way of teaching, um, the way that we assess. Uh, I broke away from, um, made sure that the, the representation, the association was separate um, from the college. And so we didn't have the same sort of link in, if you like. And um, so I've really pushed for standards and examinations and uh, uh, to make sure that we can be accountable for the, uh, the training that we give. And so I do feel that we are probably uh, paving the way and, and the tendency is for other people to follow behind. Um, so, um, but, you know, check it out yourself. I do encourage you, if you're coming to learn, to, to see who else is out there as far as providing training is concerned. And we, we, we feel and hope that we uh, will be the lead in that. Certainly it's the most widely recognized course. And certainly you're, you're dealing with people that have uh, the most experience in relation to their, uh, to their therapy. Every teacher of ours um, undergoes 400 hours as far as their training is concerned and they're already experienced therapists so it's, it's quite a big deal. Um, we, um, um, the, the thing I always ask people as far as your work is concerned is how many of you look forward to going to work uh, every day you know if you do a job how many of you might feel that the job that you do is is not really um, Honouring you is the, is the best way I can I can say. How many of you get job satisfaction from what you do? Do you love your work? And I think that when you love your job, it stops being a job. It starts to become a passion. And and that's really what I I think of my privilege is. You know, there's not there's 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 bad bits to every job. In my instance, it's having to do accounts. But there's you know there's there's. For me, the, the very idea of going into a, a, a treatment room or a, t a classroom to teach people to go and help others is just astounding. I've never really uh, got my head around it. I've never had to do a, a proper day's work in, um, in, a, in a long time simply because what I do is, is, is so incredible. And, and that's the question. Do you, do you get a buzz? Do you love your work? Do you really get off on, on the thing that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? And, and so many people don't. And it's, it's hard to find jobs that, um, that, 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 that do that. So how exciting is it? And, and what, what do you... Do you, do you get something from it in terms of helping people? Do you enjoy helping people? Does your current job allow you to do that? And um, if not, and you wanna help people and you wanna be of, of, of service and benefit to society, um, I, I'm sure you can do that in any, any, any task if you set your mind to it, but that's up to you. It's looking at yourself. And some people get to a point in time when they think actually, I don't want to go and do this. It doesn't, you know, I want to change. I might want to earn less money in terms of the job I do, but I want to uh, make a benefit and an impact to other people. And so what we're bringing to people as far as our teaching of Bowen is an opportunity to um, give people the, the, the to make a, a positive impact on, on other people's quality of life. There are so many people that wander around in, in discomfort and pain. And how would it be for, for you if you were in a position where you could help those people? Um, and that's a remarkable thing to do. So that's what we really um, want to bring people and show them that you can earn a living doing that. You can earn a living making a difference to people's lives that every day people will walk into you and go, oh my goodness, I cannot believe uh, what it is that you've, that, how you've helped me. Um, so, yeah, well, why wouldn't anybody want to do that? Um, so this is the, these are the chances that we have, the choices that we have, and the chances that we have sometimes is that we want to go off and learn a therapy. We want to learn how to help people. And there are lots of, lots of things out there. So there's uh, massage, reflexology. Um, and the thing about that, that these issues, and I learned massage and reflexology many years ago, um, is that they're physically demanding. They are things that you will have to put a lot of um, effort and energy into. I remember doing one time we did a show and I was, 
I was doing um, reflexology. I think I did about 14 short sessions, um, and you know, with generally with one hand as far as reflexology working on the feet is concerned. And I was just, I was just dead. My hands, you know, I couldn't have done that every day for years and years. And a lot of people within the field of massage, who are sort of getting into their uh, later years, and they're thinking, I'm, I'm really. You know, I'm really um, exhausted physically. This is a hard job to go and do every day. Sure, you're helping people and it's great stuff, but you know, how much can you do? Also, there's a lot of people out there that are already doing it. And there's a, a degree, sometimes a resistance as far as massage or, or reflexology. There isn't necessarily the acceptance of that. So yeah, great, great therapies to have. No, no question about it, but it's a case of, um, you know, what, what do you, you know, do you feel that that's for you? So then we have the, uh, the osteopath or the chiropractic route. And again, really popular, um, great therapies in their own right. Um, no problem about those, uh, but the problem is, is that it can take you years. Um, the chiropractic training, the, the, the British Chiropractic Association training um, to, 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 to join that is um, hugely expensive. I mean, you know, tens of thousands of pounds in the UK and the same with osteopathic, it can take a very long period of time. Um, and there's a huge amount of investment uh, that's required to do that. Um, so as far as our, our, our Bowen is concerned, or any therapy is concerned, we have to understand our, our earning potential. So we have to say, well, what is it that we need to earn and what is it we, um, that we, uh, what we have to have to have, what comes coming in and that comes from budget. Now, anything I'm gonna to say to you is just a guideline, it's just an example, um, but it's possible. There's nothing here that, that isn't uh, potentially possible. And, and we can see here that if we look at the breakdown that, that um, generally speaking, if you were gonna charge 40 pounds a session, um, then uh, 10 clients in a week, um, that's about one and a half days. And uh, there is a way of, of you know, doing two, two at a time, um, but some people do that. Then you know, your pre-income tax income before you take any expenses away would be uh, something in the region of um, 18,400 pounds. So it's so one and a half days a week. Now, of course, you can put all those into one day or two days um, or spread it out however you like. It would be entirely up to you. If you, if you doubled up and you said, right, I'm gonna spend three days and I'm gonna charge 40 pounds um, and, um, and I'm gonna get 20 clients, then you're looking at sort of in the region of, of 800 pounds uh, in the space of a, of a week. So that's uh, coming out about 36,000, um, 37,000 pounds. Now bear in mind that's pre-income tax. Obviously you're gonna to have to pay tax. You're gonna have expenses to come off that, but have a little look at that. So that's 20 clients a week. Now that's not gonna come easily. You're gonna to have to do some work to build up to that level of clients. And um, you know, that's part of our, our, our plan is to help you to do that. But you're still only working three days a week. That's still a part-time um, income if you like. Um, you know, you could work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and take Friday and Monday off and have a long weekend. Um, and bear in mind again, you know, what you're doing is helping people. And this is really, this is very achievable. This is, this is not a, a, a tricky thing to do. Um, if you did ramp it up again and you wanted 30 clients a week, um, again, spread it out over four days, eight hours, eight, nine hours a day, um, and uh, you're at 40 pounds a session, then you're sort of at 1,200 pounds uh, a week. Now, the, the point I'd say to you here is this, is that that charge that we're talking about is, a, is just a, a, a figure. Now, some people will charge more than that, uh, and some people will charge about that, and there's many people that are charging much less than that. But of course, it depends on where you are, what your economic circumstances are, what, what your client base would be. So it's just a, a figure, a sort of pitched in the middle figure uh, to, um, to give you some I, I idea of what's possible. So, um, and again, it's it's we're not presenting you with a with a with a dream here we're presenting you with a with a business plan um, and in the process you're not going to go out tomorrow and earn any of these figures you're going to have to put some time and some effort into to build your business and to get known it doesn't just uh, land on your doorstep you know this, these are um, we're very realistic about that so um, we have workshops to help you to do that, help to build your business, to webinars. And again, these are run by uh, experienced people. Um, there is a, a, a program, there's a pattern. If you do what kind of I should suggest to you, if you do this and go, keep on doing that, then these are these uh, figures that you're looking at. It's not hard to do. And everybody that's successful will come back to you and I, they say, well, well, how did you get successful? And they go, I just did what, I did what Julian said because the system is there and it's in place um, and uh, it just needs to be applied. <laughs> That's the catch. It's like any system. It's like when you, uh, I don't know, probably a gambling system. If you, if you if you if you go outside the system, then you're gonna um, 
uh, fall down. By the way, uh, that's yours. Once you've finished earning, just so you're clear, that there's no, there's no payback to us. We don't take anything from that. There's no um, royalty payments that we take. People do ask us, oh, do you earn from your students? Absolutely not. We train you and we give you the assistance and you go out and you, you earn that. You just pay us for your training whenever you come and uh, train with us. So there is a, a clear pathway. We'll keep you on top of skills. Uh, we'll give you loads of um, other useful information. We'll support you. Um, all our teachers are, are, are there and it's inbuilt in them that you know, there is a support system and they are at the end of the phone and email to help you uh, as much as possible. It's really, uh, really important for us that we are considered to be um, supportive in, in, our, in our role. So who do we teach? We teach existing therapists. We have quite a lot of people that are, um, maybe they're doing massage for a little while, they've been doing reflexology, or they've been doing certain things, maybe they've been um, within the beauty field. We get quite a few people coming in from the beauty field. People coming from, uh, we have a lot of um, paramedics and ambulance te technicians, people um, who are sort of just looking to expand their, their stable of therapies, if you like. Another source of um, students for us sometimes is existing clients, people that have had Bowen and go, this is amazing. I'm, I, I've got people that I would like to help you know, with this. And, um, and so existing clients sign up um, and come and, and, and do the class. We, get, we do get quite a few people of those. It's quite, a, quite an interesting uh, phenomenon. People that have got to a certain stage where they go, I, I just don't want to go into work. You know, I, um, teachers, um, I'm, a lot of teachers, they, they don't want to be teachers anymore. They love the teaching. It's just all the other stuff that goes with it. Um, they still want the flexibility, maybe their parents, um, and uh, maybe they just don't want to do the thing that they do anymore. It doesn't give them the joy. Um, and so we have people that are interested in career change, people coming out of the forces or other, um, other public services sometimes sort of taking that retirement and they're looking for a, a career change. Um, Sometimes people are, we've got quite a lot of people that are um, working with, who want to work on animals, who want to work with horses and dogs. And we don't teach any of that um, animal bowen therapy, but um, there are other places that we point people in the direction of. Uh, but all those people insist that you do work on humans first. And, and a lot of people have come to that and they go, oh, I only want to work on humans. I only really like working on the animals. But it's amazing how many of them go, I only worked on the humans simply because I had to, but I've really enjoyed it and I've, you know, I've helped loads of people. And then uh, we have a, a class of people that just have people at home, family, friends, um, somebody wants to help their football team or what have you. And um, this is how, you know, this is just how they want to, um, to do it. So it's an easy thing to do um, and uh, it doesn't, it's not sort of too demanding. We have quite a few people who uh, have been caring for somebody um, and they want to help them. Uh, and then they start to work on other carers as well, but they don't do it as a full time uh, or a career change. So the key elements um, as, as far as Bowen is concerned is that it's a light touch. And we talk about a light touch and as much as there is touch, there is contact, you know, we are touching a body, but we're not pressing hard, we're not pressing um, deeply onto the tissues that we're working on, putting lots of pressure on. Um, and again, that's why if I go back to the thing about people that, who, who've already um, been therapists is, is that they feel that they are, uh, that that pressure is something that is unsustainable as far as their body is concerned. We can do the work through light clothing. So this makes it quite acceptable for a lot of people who don't want to get undressed, they don't want to take their clothes off. And so we can work through light clothing. Um, this is helpful for elderly people, um, children as well, um, are massively receptive to, uh, to Bowen. And so again, we just don't want to get people undressed. It's sometimes it's, it's some people don't want to do that. Um, and so we can do the work um, very effectively through light clothing. Um, we, I would describe um, Bowen as being sort of more hands-off than hands-on. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, shortly, but it's not, uh, there's not a huge amount of sort of hands-on uh, work that we do. Um, it may sound a bit strange, but the principle of Bowen really is that we're letting the body do the work rather than us having to force the body into it. And so um, really, the, 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 in order to do that, what we do is give the body a chance. And we put some breaks in between moves and allow that body to reset and we go out of the room. It will all be explained. It does sound a bit strange for a lot of people, and and people have said, "Oh, is that that therapy where you leave, where you leave the room?" And it's like, yeah, and there's a really, really good reason why we do that, and um, it's something that I, I really have am more convinced about over the years than anything else. So um, the other as aspect is that there are when we get changes, the the 
we can get rapid remedial outcomes. We can get really big changes as far as pain is concerned. And, and understanding pain from you know, how it transpires, how it comes up and you know, what it is, th there's no reason why pain can't change very quickly. Uh, and so you know, we see the most remarkable changes in people. Um, one of the jobs that I have is, is to mark case stud studies and to see what people are doing in, this, in the space of sort of two or three sessions is, is phenomenal. Um, and we can treat we can treat anybody. You know, we can treat from we say from the cradle to the grave. I say fetal, fetal to fatal. And uh, literally, you know, whoever walks in through your door, there's no um, there's no reason why we can't treat them from babies to colic to people towards the end of their lives. And and um, there are people working in palliative care as well. Um, and so you know, it's a beautiful treatment to give simply because it's so gentle and it's so accessible. The consistency of the outcomes is something that's notable. Again, we're seeing that that you know people. It, 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 you give five or six treatments a week for six months, you're going to see changes. There's no question about that. Um, and, um, it, you know, those are pretty much guaranteed. You can't, you cannot not get changes if you do the uh, technique as is, as is as taught to you. It's, it's there. It's almost guaranteed. Over the years, um, Bowen has become a lot more respected, mainly because of the acceptability and the outcomes that we're getting and the, and the changes that we get. And the fact that, you know, we're still here. I've been here, as I said, doing it for 30 years and trying to explain it in a way that is reasonable, physiological, following the current evidence, evidential thinking in terms of um, the, the science behind it as, as, as best as we can. And so we're not making wild claims about what it is that we're doing. And so therefore we've earned the respect of people um, in, in both spheres as far as complementary medicine um, and, um, and, uh, and other forms of therapy. So physiotherapists and so on and so forth have, have picked it up. So if you're already a therapist, then um, great, then, then you're already sort of qualified. You know what you want, you know how to run your business, you know what you need. Um, but this is a great added value tool for your business. This is something that you can pick up. Um, you can decide that you want to do some uh, massage or some reflexology and, and add Bowen as another tool. Um, and you can add a tool that is uh, widely accepted and widely respected and very easily and sort of just slot that quite happily into your, into your, um, uh, into your existing client base. In addition to that, you can really increase your client base. It, there's, um, um, people understand Bowen now. There's a lot of um, writing about it. We've had the books out and it's quite a respected thing that people see the results. And as a result, the, um, the, the reputation, if you like, both of the Bowen and us as a college ha has grown exponentially over the years. And you know, when I came back to the UK, it was just me. And so, you know, it's a, it's a pretty widely known therapy. Um, and really all you have to do to increase your client base and increase your turnover um, is just do the training. There's very little um, other cost involved. You know, there's no products, there's no ranges, there's no maintaining stock, there's no ongoing uh, payments as it were. It's just a case of you do your training and, and, and that's it really. So it's a, it's a, it's a no brainer. You know, if you imagine you had to set up a new business and stock it um, in the high street and then run it um, with the hours that you <laughs> people would come, uh, that's quite a big ask. Again, we go back to this idea that it's easy on the hands. It's not physically demanding. You know, you can do three or four sessions, five, six, seven sessions in a day and, and still be um, quite happy to go out in the evening and, and, um, and, and not be exhausted. And, and it means that you have longevity in the business. It means that you're not thinking, right, what am I going to be doing um, in 10 years time? How am I going to sustain this this, this, this pressure on my body, it's a hard thing to do. And, um, and as a result, of course, you're thinking that, well, you know, if I don't keep doing it, I don't keep earning uh, an income. And um, so with Bowen, you, you can keep going. We've got therapists in their 70s and 80s who've just, they don't want to stop um, because they, they, they love it. And they might only be doing two or three a week, but you know, I think one therapist is 88 and she still sees people and gives them treatments. So, you know, why not? So let's have a little understanding what Bowen exactly is and, um, and what it comprises. So we, we talked about the opportunity of it, but what is it? And it's, been, it's named after a man called Thomas Ambrose Bowen. He was from, um, uh, he lived in, in, in Melbourne, outside of Melbourne. He lived in Geelong in Victoria in Australia. And um, he was not an educated man. He left school at the age of 14. Um, his family were in the Salvation Army. Um, he smoked a lot of cigarettes and um, he was just interested he, and he seemed to have a gift. He worked as a general hand at the cement works. He didn't have any formal training in, um, in, in, any, in any shape, way, shape or form, but he seemed to be able to 
put his hands on people and help them. Um, we think he did some work with a massage therapist called Ernie Saunders, but we don't know. And so the, the background is a bit hazy. There's all kinds of, as you can imagine, there's all kinds of stories uh, that would get uh, get talked about him. But, you know, he was he was quite a, a, an interesting man. Um, let's just go back, I'm go back and talk a little bit more about Tom because the thing about Tom was that he was um, he, he wanted to become an osteopath. That was what he called himself. And he applied to be um, to, to the board to be classified as an osteopath. Um, and um, and the reason being was that then people would would be able to have insurance they'd be able to claim their treatments on insurance. So he was, again, he was thinking about other people. Um, but during his treatment times, he was treating um, morning, morning and afternoon, he'd have a break for lunch and people would come in, and they'd take a number off a board. Um, and he would treat sort of 30 odd people in the morning and 30 odd people in the afternoon. And when he gave evidence to the board about being an osteopath in, in the 70s, um, he estimated that he was doing 13,000 treatments a year. So most of which were first or second treatments. So that's quite a remarkable turnover when you think about it. An amazing um, workload that he had. And a lot of it was done for free. He'd treat the cr cricket club. you get a policeman who would get brought to him at one o'clock in the morning. Um, and he would treat in exchange for a tropical fish tank in his house, for example, or a meat tray. So he was just one of these guys that was very humble about what he did. Um, and, um, and he taught a few guys, and I think he taught a few guys basically so that he could get a handle on the language that was being taught. He didn't explain what he was doing. He didn't make loads of notes. He didn't uh, write down about you know, how to do it. He just did his thing. It wasn't called the biotechnique. So uh, let's have a quick look at the move and we'll understand a little bit more um, some of the principles involved. So the first thing is we have something called uh, the skin slack. And the skin slack is um, where we move skin around over the area um, that we're going to be working on. So um, the amount of, of pressure that we have to apply is very minimal. We don't have to apply very much pressure, but if we just move the skin around um, on the back of our hand, that's what we call uh, skin slack. Um, and there's going to be a point in time when that stops. You know, we can't move any further. The, the sort of the, the skin doesn't travel any further and we have to stop. Um, and that's when we sort of uh, make the move. So it's the movement of the skin without sliding or pressure. So again, an important element is to understand we don't slide over any of the uh, surfaces that we're working on. When we get to the end of the range of that skin, then we uh, create a little challenge. We create a little pressure that's on, on you know, so if this, I'm using my thumb, I get to the end of that skin, there's my thumb there. I take the skin slack, I apply some pressure, I make a challenge before I make the move. So the challenge is a challenge that's pushing up against the underlying tissues. Now there's lots of different underlying tissues, but um, the, the main thing is, is that um, the, whatever the tissues are, we explain those a little bit more, more detail, we're challenging and pushing, but not hard. So the type of pressure that we talk about using is an eyeball type of pressure. So if I put my fingers on my eyeball, I can feel my uh, fingers on top of my eyeball moving around on top of my eyelid, but I'm not pressing so hard that it's uncomfortable or that I'm feeling I'm um, putting too much pressure and jabbing into my eye. So it's that comfort range, you know, and, and again, it's going to change. So from one client to the other, that pressure is going to change. And then the final part of this is, is the disturbance. So we're going to get a disturbance. So we've got the skin slack, we've got a, a challenge, and then we create some movement. We disturb the underlying tissue. That underlying tissue gets disturbed. And if we just have a little look at that, we can sort of see if I, if I just make the move, I push, and there's a disturbance on the underlying tissue. It's not a flick. Um, it's more, uh, you describe it more as a sort of a rolling, a rolling over the tissue to create an underlying, uh, to get disturbance of the underlying tissue. And there's a reason why we do that. And again, the theory of it is explained, but essentially what we're doing is trying to create um, a sensation that has to be picked up and monitored by the brain. Um, and um, we'll, we'll sort of explain that. So um, here's just a little video of, of me explaining a bit, a bit more. So have a little look at this and uh, we'll come back. The move itself um, comprises a couple of se sections. First of all, we have something that we talk about, which is the skin slack. So over all of our body, we have skin, and underlying this skin, we have um, a connective tissue, which is called the superficial fascia. It's called lots of other things and lots of different names for it. But within this superficial fascia is also the adipose. So in some areas of the body, it's very thin, and in other areas of the body, it's a lot thicker. So around the waist or around the, uh, the lower back, it's a lot th thicker. In the hands, um, it's a lot thinner, and, and it goes around the body in various degrees of thickness. But our bone move consists of us taking the skin slack in a very, very light way 
to the edge where that skin slack and that adipose tissue, that superficial fascia stops us from moving any further. And if we went any further, we would slide and there's no sliding in bone as I've already mentioned. So we take the skin slack to its limit and then we apply gentle pressure, pressure that we refer to as eyeball type pressure. And then with that pressure, we then make a rolling type move over the muscular structure that we can feel underneath and through the superficial fascia. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps you. But again, the principle here is, is that um, the, the bottom line for us all is that it's a very gentle technique. It's gentle on the therapist and it's gentle uh, on the client. And, um, you know, really shouldn't be painful. If anybody's had a bone that's painful, um, then, you know, I can pretty much be sure that um, somebody's doing it wrong. Now, of course, there's going to be times when you put your hands on somebody and, and, they, and they flinch or you've gone a bit too firm. But really, if it's consistently painful, then um, it really isn't bowen and, um, you know, it, it should stop. So some of the other key elements here, um, as I mentioned earlier on, that we put brakes in. And the brakes are kind of... Um, interesting but the, the the principle is is we leave the room where possible sometimes it's not possible to leave the room but we get out of the room for two minutes and that starts what I call a, a conversation you know a, a dialogue between the systems of the body you know what was that move uh, what was the required uh, response to it what I call the appropriate response mechanism and um, what what do we need to do um, the other thing that, that, that's a very key element to Bowen is something called the stoppers. Um, again, all this gets explained in detail, but basically moves that are working on structurally, structurally that's our word to say, structurally loaded areas of the body. So, um, for example, the lower back, there's loads of structures coming in, loads of connective tissue, loads of fascia, loads of muscle, um, and they come in lots and lots of different layers um, and blend into one area. And so, um, we understand that if we're working on those areas, it's going to be lots of, it's going to be energetic, there's going to be loading, there's going to be strain on it. Um, and so those stoppers work on those areas. And so the stoppers are a key um, element of that. Um, and the other thing that we say is uh, for our clients not to have any other treatments. We don't mix treatments. And that's not a reflection of, um, of other treatments. That's more just a reflection of look. Um, sometimes Bowen takes a little while for it to work itself out. Um, it just... Um, it takes a little bit of time for your body to decide what to do and how to interpret it. It's an unusual approach. Um, and by having no other treatments, it allows uh, the changes to take place, the subconscious to be worked on. Um, there's nobody else that's sort of interfering with the uh, directions of how to get from point A to point B, if you like. So we do always say to people, just, just you know, just have your bow on um, and just see how that goes. Particularly if you've been having treatment for a, a longer period of time, uh, then, you know, come and have a few sessions of bow and see how you get on with that. And then go back to your massage or whatever else if you want to. So here's the, here's the rub, if you like, you know, why, why do we think it works? And you notice that the, um, <laughs> the, the, um, the emphasis on why we think it works, because we can't be sure and um, there's a lot of things in this world that we don't know uh, how it works and, and um, that doesn't mean to say that it's not effective that uh, lack of evidence doesn't mean that there's evidence of lack you know we don't fully understand how things like uh, anesthetics work or, or various other bits and pieces so um, but really here's a, a theory and this is what I've been working on uh, pretty much my whole of my adult life as to why we think it works and this theory is always going to change um, you know come back in a year's time or five years time and I may be thinking something completely different because that's what science does it, it, it shows up uh, different ideas and understandings and new theories but principally um, what we have is we have the, the the concept of touch so whenever we touch anybody whenever we're touched or we touch anybody else there is a signal and that signal um, if I just go back to that a minute that touch is is taking um, signals along sensory nerve endings to the spinal cord through a series of, of, of um, neural pathways called afferent nerve endings. So there's afferent nerve endings. Now they'll pick up um, various degrees of mechanical input and um, we're not gonna go into those right now, but essentially they are afferent, they're taking information to the spinal cord. That spinal cord then takes that information up to a part of the brain called the hypothalamus that then interprets what that touch was. 
Now with a Bowen move, that's pretty hard to interpret. We're not sure what it was, you know, what was it? Um, um, and then what's happening with certainly as far as a normal touch is concerned, um, is it's coming back down from the hypothalamus, down through the spinal cord, and then being taken out into the body or wherever it needs to be through efferent. So it's afferent signals and, and efferent signals. And if somebody comes up to me and touches me, um, then there's a lot of things that might go on in that. If I go up to somebody and say, oh, may I touch you in a, in a teaching situation? Well, I say, yeah, that's fine. If I was gonna go up to them in a, in a bar or something and say the same thing, they'd be, oh, go away, you creepy guy. So there's lots of um, elements that will influence the way that our brain interprets that in a context and, uh, and, and temperature and, and the person involved. Um, but principally, there has to be um, an electrical signal that's strong enough that then is generating what's called an action potential, which is taken to the spine and taken out the brain. Now, some uh, signals will come to the spine and go back out. We call those reflexes. But principally, what's going on is that the brain has to go, here is an interpretation. Now, that interpretation may be to turn pain off or to um, introduce more fluid. It could be anything that might be happening um, through, through the body. We just, we just don't know. But principally, we're introducing a, a system of touch, and we'll see what happens from there. So here's our brain. Um, here's our, our sort of central point. Here's our touch. Our touch is traveling along to our action potential. Um, and again, we're not gonna get too much detail about, about sort of graded potential and action potentials, but basically it's, it's an electrical input. You know, if you experience something, and it doesn't have to necessarily be true, you know, you might see uh, what appears to be a snake coming towards you but is, and, and, and react accordingly, uh, but it is actually only a, a branch or a shadow or something like that. So, um, it, you know, it doesn't have to be actually um, a, a real thing, it's just how your brain interprets it. The average potential sends a signal to the spinal pathway, um, different bits of the spine, which then takes that signal up to the specific part of the brain for interpretation. So it's gonna to have to go up to a bit of the brain that says, right, what was that? What do we need to do? What's our appropriate response mechanism? There's our uh, sensory input. And from here, out it comes and back out to a response and that's going, as I said, going through our afferent signals. And the, the response will be whatever the interpretation says. Now, of course, pain, for example, um, it means different things to different people. And it's a very personal response. You know, one person's pain is another person's wobbly tooth and so on and so forth. So we just don't know exactly how anything's going to be interpreted. This is the beauty of it as far as, um, as, far as our, our understanding of it is concerned, is that we are gonna to continue to try and investigate it, to try and work out uh, what it is we're doing, um, why we're doing it, what's happening. And for us, um, we think of Bowen as, a, as being alive and well. Now, there are other people that say, well, you know, when Tom Bowen died, his, 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 his uh, treatment died, you know, his technique died. And I don't think that's the case because I don't think that Tom worked on a series of procedures. In fact, he didn't. He worked in, intuitively about uh, what was uh, coming on, coming into his room. So I think that's the same for us is that we, we I would say that Bowen is, is, a, is a system of body work rather than a series of procedures. Um, and that the possibilities in terms of how you might um, interpret what's being presented to you is endless. And so we teach you to, to body read, to understand uh, some biomechanics, how things are linked up, um, and um, how to then sort of read from your client what's, what might be they're not saying. You know, somebody's coming in with a neck uh, that looks in a funny position or a jaw that's in a funny position, but they've got back pain or knee pain, and we'll teach you um, how to interpret that and then treat accordingly. And generally speaking, pain is a, is a bit of a red herring. So even though, you know, um, we talked about the brain signals, but you can have uh, pain without damage and you can have damage without pain. You know, the two aren't uh, necessarily synonymous. So we have to understand that a little bit more. And um, from there, once you understand the principles, that, that there's no limit to what you can do as far as your, uh, your treatments are concerned. And I, I know people that go off and do other therapies or other versions of it for me. As I said, it's over 30 years, but I haven't really found anything that works uh, as well when it's applied properly. And I've been looking you know, really, really hard over the years, trust me on this. So Bowen is asking the body to do the work um, itself. I'm just get rid of my picture there. You don't want my face in that one. Uh, but bodies, the Bowen is asking the body to do the work itself. You know, on the basis that um, the, the 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 law of of the the body is entropy, it's chaos. It's asking it to sort of order itself. And um, an osteopath I met many years ago, a wonderful man called Malcolm Stem, um, gave me this, and he said the, first, it's, the, the Bowen obeys the first law of natural cure. 
that the body be treated as a whole without referral to name disease. And this is a really important aspect. You know, people will come in and they say, oh, I've got I don't know, gout or, uh, uh, you know, kidney disease or whatever it happens to be. You know, what would you do? What procedures would you do for that, for that condition? And it's not a, con the conditions aren't something that I'm interested in. I don't really care about the conditions. The conditions aren't, um, I don't treat conditions, I treat people. And it may be that we can't, do anything for that condition. It may be that we can't get rid of the condition, but we work with somebody to help them and they find more patience with it. They can sleep better. They can, um, they're in maybe a little less pain or a little less, less discomfort. Maybe they have a bit more confidence. So the condition itself isn't really what we're interested in. So we don't diagnose, we don't treat specific conditions and we don't uh, change or alter medications. It's a really important thing that we don't do. Um, but you know, there, there isn't any position that we can't be in where we can't help somebody. So um, our training schedule is, is laid out in a way that is um, designed to give you um, input and give you training and teaching and then bring you back and to um, sort of get you topped up, but also allow space to um, allow you to go and practice and to gain confidence and understand uh, what it is that you're doing. So we have five three-day modules. Each module is three-day, that includes the, the last part. And um, the we approximately 10 to 12 weeks spacing between each of those modules. And um, it's generally going to take about a year. Um, we could do it in a minimum of nine months, just a case of where, uh, where you happen to be and what else is going on. But generally speaking, it's gonna be sort of nine, uh, about nine to 12 months uh, for you to go all the way through that. Um, and um, we have a built-in um, flexibility. So, you know, if you wanted to do part one and then circumstances were that you couldn't do part two for, you know, for, for some time, you can come back and we ask you to come back within 12 months to do that. Um, so, you know, there's no requirement for you to book all the way through, you know, it's very flexible. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> um, you can change your tutor. So we've got several tutors. Uh, we've always got tutors um, uh, running different schedules and different modules uh, around the country so uh, you know you might decide you want to go and uh, do module one uh, with uh, with one tutor because it's in Manchester and you've got your friend up there and you might want to do uh, modules two and three with somebody else uh, because it's close to home and module four uh, because it's you know near a, a family member so you can change tutors um, as as needed as, as you as you require there's no requirement for you to stay uh, with the same tutor um, and about a year, as I said, you can be fully qualified. You can be an earning practitioner from a year from today or a year from now. Um, once you take your first module, that's it. Get get up and running. Um, what's what's to stop you? There's nothing. You know, it's not a. Uh, we're not asking for you know hundred thousand pounds. It's it really is. It's you start a new business uh, in a space of a year for for very very little. It's quite remarkable. Um, so speaking of how much it's going to cost you, yeah, is a bottom line. And, um, and and again, if I go back to the idea of you know if you wanted a business, if you wanted to have a, a shop in the high street, imagine you know you've got to take the rent, you've got to have uh, a lease on it, you've got to stock your st stock your shop, you've got to have maybe staff, you've got to be in there six or seven days a week, and it's going to cost you thousands and thousands. So really, what we're looking at for a training investment for you um, is um, each module is costing you four hundred and fifty pounds. So um, now these these costs have been held quite low for quite some time um, and um, you know we're just in a position of, of deciding what we're going to do with it but really at the moment it, it's um, uh, for an outcome of what you're going to get it's 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 re remarkably uh, cheap 450 pounds for for each of the modules um, with the exception of the module five there's a bit more uh, work for that um, and there's an exam at the end of that and so on and so forth. So for, for all your five modules to get you up and running and qualified and trained, you're looking at an investment of 2,300 uh, pounds. There's no extra cost on that. There's no VAT, uh, there's nothing else. Now you might have to take out some insurance. Um, again, that's not much, it's 50 quid a year. Um, you would probably have to have some um, professional memberships, um, register for data protection, maybe buy a massage table if you haven't got one. But we're talking well under, depending on the, you know, I mean, you, you can spend as much as you want on the massage table, but uh, you're talking well under sort of you know, 500 quid for all of that. So really the extra cost involved aren't, aren't huge at all. Um, and, and yeah, there you go, up and running in, 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 the, um, in the space of a year. So think about what else you might spend 2,300 quid on. A television, in, you know, it costs you a holiday uh, for a week and that's it. Um, so it really is, is a remarkable, and I just look at those figures to this day and think, wow, that, that is, um, <laughs> that's, um, 
pretty cheap. Uh, yeah, so in terms of what you're getting. So the return on the investment, the ROI, if you want to get technical, um, is, as we mentioned before, we ran these figures past you. And again, these are just a model for you. This is just an example. It's not, there's no guarantees of this. Um, but the average you, a Bowen cost is about £40. Again, it depends where you are. If you were in London and you were um, you know, in a, uh, working out of a clinic and you had other overheads um, and a requirement for the clinic to charge a certain amount, well, you know, that's, that's slightly different. But um, three treatments is 120 pounds. And uh, so you're looking at 20 clients um, is uh, 100 times 120 uh, is 2,400, uh, 2,400 pounds. So as we recommend, we recommend people come for three, uh, for, three, for three treatments. So all you need to do pretty much is in your first year, your first month, if you like, following being, being trained, go and find 20 clients to work on um, and you've paid for your training. You've paid for your investment. That's it. Now, obviously, you know, we understand that you've got the cost of coming to the class and accommodation and what have you. Um, but really, it, it's just uh, it's just as, as far as a no brainer is concerned. So 20 clients are three treatment treatments. Uh, that's it. You, you, your training costs are, are, are paid for. Um, and I'm pretty much that you're sure that you're going to find that you are going to get some remarkable results. In fact, you know, I am 100 percent sure. So uh, why train with us? And uh, well, I would say this, wouldn't I? But, but we, do, we do have some benefits. We believe, and I, I'm fairly convinced knowing the field, um, that if you wanna learn Bowen, we're the best people to come and, and, and learn Bowen with. Um, I've been around and, and running Bowen and uh, still involved in it, as I said, since 94, since 1988. There aren't uh, many people that are, are still around. Most of the existing uh, teachers of other schools originally trained with me. And, um, and so, yeah, we, 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 I started it off. When I came to the UK, there was uh, me and somebody else in London and uh, she went off to Australia and it was just me, that was it. I was the only therapist in the UK. So, um, and nobody wanted to know about it. And so I've been here since, since the word go and uh, worked hard to keep it there. Um, we mentioned the flex and module training. So again, you don't have to stay with the same teacher. You can move around. Um, you can move from place to place. And uh, so there's a lot of flexibility. We don't ask you to have any um, previous anatomy training. In some respects, that's sometimes a hindrance. Uh, we'll teach you all the anatomy that you need to know, to know in order to later, later on to go and be, um, to have professional standing, um, there is a requirement uh, coming up for you to undertake um, some uh, anatomy and physiology training, which will be separate away from us. And so uh, th those, those will be explained to you later on. But if you just wanted to work on family and friends or, or without the professional standing, uh, then you don't need um, you know, anything as far as that's concerned. So um, the anatomy, the relevant anatomy we, we bring you. Um, I'm... I'm passionate. I'm passionate about the science behind uh, the work, why, we, why you think it works. Um, I'm passionate about um, helping people with research, undertaking research, um, understanding the anatomy, the connective tissue, redefining the way that we talk about um, touch. Uh, there's so many things that, that, that this has been my life's work. I'm not going anywhere. You know, you're not coming to an organization that started off yesterday with a, with a young and who's got some ideas. You're dealing with somebody that is... Um, has been here from the word go and um, whose team, who's built teams around him and who knows um, exactly what that training should look like and why that training um, is the way that it is. And you're dealing with um, professional people who've been doing this for a long time and you have the passion that runs through it. So you're not likely to get um, the, the, the answers to your questions in terms of connective tissue, whether it be from you know, signals to the brain or anything else. You're not gonna get that anywhere else. This is where you're gonna get it if you want good, sound, um, constructive understanding of, of not just bow and touch, but any kind of touch. You know, you, that, this is us, this is what we do. Um, ongoing support and training. I have people that, that email me from years ago that I haven't even seen for a while, and they'll go, well, can you help me out? And I'll say, of course, you know, once, once you're in, you're in, as it were. And, and, you know, I lend that support. I've gone and done a series of talks around the country for people, um, you know, just because I want to get the word out there about pain and what Bowen is. Um, and so we'll have that, always have that uh, ongoing support. Federation of Holistic Therapists, as I said, um, is um, one of the biggest complementary therapy organizations in the, U in the United Kingdom, has over 20,000 members. Um, and they've looked at our training and, and, and said, yeah, it's awesome. It's great. So you get um, accreditation with that. So again, uh, a few good reasons as to why uh, to do that. So the other important element for, for us and for me particularly is 
um, continued development of the technique. Now, there's continued professional development in terms of uh, we have lots of other classes to bring you on, specialist areas around temporomandibular joint, breathing in the pelvis and so on and so forth. But the technique itself is alive and well, and uh, I want to understand that it's a dynamic technique, as I mentioned before, that it's a, um, a system of body work rather than a series of procedures. So therefore, uh, we're constantly looking to, or I'm constantly looking to, to see how within the system uh, we can um, you know, develop that and, and keep that going. So that's an important element for us in the future. We want to make sure that when you come along in a class that it's, that it's fun. You know, I'm not an academic. I'm not somebody that is um, obsessed with uh, teaching you lots and lots of detail. And um, we want to make sure that you are relaxed, you are away from home or work, and uh, that you are engaged and uh, enjoying it. Uh, we encourage you to hook up with your, with your um, uh, fellow students and practice. And, you know, people have made lifelong friends and we've got you know, people that are grandchildren and uh, of, of people that did it years ago coming along now. In fact, you know, my family is, um, is a good example. My mother learnt um, in the first, one of the first classes we ran over here and now my daughter's learning. So, you know, generations of people are coming to learn Bowen and it's just lovely to see how people are coming back and back uh, over the years to, uh, to, to learn Bowen. Um, so, you know, we, we, <laughs> we want to engage you in having fun. There's an elephant on that slide, which will all will be uh, explained. So this is the, the feedback that we have. You know, people are saying nice things about us. You know, it was a fantastic course and great value. Um, I learned more than I first thought I would. <laughs> um, and it is very hands-on. You know, the whole point is that it's a hands-on technique. There's not a huge amount of theory um, that we want to spend lots of time. You know, we want to get you hands-on and, and get you practicing. And, um, you know, our feedback is always good. You know, most people sort of say it's the best uh, class they've ever done. So what are your next steps? Well, uh, contact us, get in touch and let us know um, where you're at and we can get you started on a class uh, wherever you happen to be and we can talk you through the process and we can help you to um, get yourself enrolled on a class with us. You know, what we uh, want to do is we want to uh, get you started on your Bowen journey, get you started on um, really looking at how we can in the next year or so get you putting your hands on people and taking their pain away. I know that sounds uh, ridiculous to, to even suggest for some people right now, but that's what will happen. Um, that over within immediately starting, within the first module that you start on, you go away from that and you will see results and changes instantaneously. It will, it will really blow your mind. You won't, you won't believe it. Uh, but if you have any any questions at all um, in the meantime um, then please don't hesitate to get in touch um, if you'd like to contact one of our team uh, somebody will get back to you uh, please send us an email message us in any way shape or form if you've got any questions about how to get started or any questions about the technique if you're not sure um, maybe to book a session have a try it out with somebody that's near you and uh, we we'll certainly will do anything we can to help you along your journey and I I look forward to meeting every single one of you at part five or another workshop sometime in the future. This has been my life. You know, this has been my, my children have grown up um, not knowing anything except Bowen um, for, for, for the solution to their aches and pains and what have you. And um, I'm more excited and interested in Bowen than I ever have been. It's, it's just been my whole life and I, I, I cannot express how much it blows me away. So I hope you take this uh, opportunity and these steps. Come on board, come and join us. Um, something really remarkable is happening and uh, I look forward to welcoming each and every one of you uh, into our Bowen family. See you soon. Mm -hmm.